Good day, boys and girls. We shall be looking into another topic today. We shall be discussing about crop propagation. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to define crop propagation. List and explain methods of crop propagation. List and explain types of germination. What is crop propagation? Looking at the word crop and propagation, we have two words. We know what crop is all about. Looking at the meaning of the word propagation, propagation simply means to multiply or to spread something or to reproduce something. With this, we can now say that crop propagation is a process which plants are reproduced as independent units. Or, we can say that crop propagation is a method of increasing or multiplying the numbers of crop plants and planting by planting either their seeds or vegetative parts, that is the leaf, stems, or roots. Okay. Methods or types of crop propagation. We have sexual methods. Or reproducing by seeds. Then we have a sexual method of vegetative propagation. Propagation by use of any plant parts apart from the seed. Sexual propagation. If we now say that sexual propagation is a propagation or the multiplication of plants by the use of seed, how does this method of propagation become a sexual method? It's considered a sexual method because two sex cells are required to have a seed. At the end, the seed is used for propagation of crop plants. In this method, looking at this picture of the flower, it involves a female egg and a male holding sex cells of a flower to produce seed. The pollen is transferred from the anther to the stigma. Fertilization occurs and seed are produced. The process of moving the pollen grains to the stigma. Stigma is the female part of the plant flower, while the anther is the main part of the female flower. It's known as pollination. At the end of pollination, fertilization takes place, the seed is produced, and that seed is used for propagation of crop. Because of this, this method is considered as sexual propagation. Since seeds are used as planting materials in sexual propagation, the seeds should be used must be number one viable free from weed seeds must be free from pest and disease pathogens methods of planting seeds we have basically two types of methods the first one is planting in situ or planting directly to the field. In situ means its original place. 
The original place of every crop or plant is on the field. In this method, the seed is planted directly into the field. Most of the seeds that are planted directly on the field are seeds of those crops that are annual crops. They grow, develop, bear fruits within one year or one planting season and after that they die. They don't have a long period of time for development. Examples of such seeds are maize, cowpea, granite, okra, soya beans, millet, cotton, and many more. The second method is the nursery method. In the nursery method, the seeds are planted in a shaded environment and are taken care of for about two, three, four or more weeks before taken directly to the field. From the picture here, you can see this plant are not planted directly in the field, but they are planted either in a lilon or in a container where they are taken care of. This method is known as a nursery method. The plants are taken care of first in a place called the nursery before taking to the field. Most of the plants that go through this process are the perennial crops and some of the biennial crops. They are not taken to the field immediately. Some of them have to grow, develop before bearing fruit within a year or over a year. Because of that, they are not directly exposed to the harshness of the environment. They are first of all taken care of, get to a certain level before taking out to the field. Now, example of such crops you have the tomato, pepper, oil palm, African spinach, citrus, cocoa, and many more. Seed germination. What is seed germination? Seed germination is a process whereby the seed absorb water, swell, and produce radical. Radical is the embryonic root of a plant. After this process, the seed will now start growing into a plant. Condition for seed germination. Seeds of crop can germinate when planted under favorable conditions. Remember, we said a seed that must be used for planting must be viable, must be free from weed seeds, must be free from disease pathogens. But there are conditions that can help this seed to germinate properly. Such conditions are number one, adequate temperature, adequate moisture, adequate oxygen, and adequate light. If these conditions are there, any seed that is planted will germinate without having any problem. Types of germination. We have two types of germination, the epigeal germination and the hypogeal germination. In epigeal germination, when a seed is planted, the cotyledon is taken above the soil level. From our studies of uh, monocotyledon and dicotyledon, in Genesis 1, year 7, all grade 7, we know that cotyledon is known as the seed leaf. In this type of germination, the seed leaf is taken out above the soil level at the process of germination of that seed. Most of the seeds that are involved in this kind of germination 
are dicots. All dicots, that is dicotoligneous plants, undergo this type of germination. So we have cowpea, granite, and the rest. Then there is hypogeal germination. In hypogeal germination, the cotyledon is left below the soil level. This is the major difference between epigeal and hypogeal. In epigeal, the cotyledon is brought above the soil level, while in hypogeal, the cotyledon is left below the soil level. Most of the plants that go through this process are the monocotyledonous plants. Almost all cereal crops go through this type of germination. Okay. I believe you've learned a lot in this lesson. Let's have the following assessment. Number one, what is crop propagation? Number two, list two types of crop propagation. Number three, what is seed germination? I believe with the class you have today, you'll be able to answer this question. If you have a problem of answering this question, you can go over the video again and then answer the question. Have a great day. Thank you for being part of this class.